Now this, this was devastating to hear. Micron, crucial. These guys just announced that they're going to be exiting the consumer market for good, and they're entirely going to be focusing on the AI data center industry. You guys are probably familiar with their products. If anything, you're probably using some of their drives or memory right now, as they're one of the big three manufacturers in the DRAM and NAND flash industry. But that supply, it's going to be drying up. And let me tell you guys this, they're not the only ones who are thinking this way. When I said in my last video that things are going to get worse, trust me, they're going to get worse. Could you imagine if you went to your local micro center, Best Buy, you know, Canada computers, you know, you were planning on going there to go get some RAM or an SSD in the store associates like, yeah, sorry, we don't. So we don't sell that stuff anymore. And I don't think it's going to get that bad, but you know, who knows what the future holds. But yeah, a lot to discuss and let's get into it in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you're all doing well. So I wanted to talk to you guys about Micron who owned the consumer brand Crucial and their decision to exit the consumer market. I'm personally a bit sad to see this. I've used plenty of Crucial products in the past. In fact, I'm actually using two Crucial drives in my personal system right now. And, you know, they've made some pretty solid products along with, you know, delivering decent value compared to uh, some of their competitors. But as you guys know, and if you've been keeping up with the developments in the semiconductor and the flash industry, things are pretty chaotic right now because a lot of these companies have pivoted their focus to supporting and fulfilling their business with these AI data center companies, which from obviously a business perspective makes sense right now because they want to make the most money since the AI market is rapidly growing. And in that market, you have the fattest margins. So when I saw Micron's press release saying that they were canning Crucial's consumer line, I had to do sort of like a double take there. If you think about it from their point of view, why on earth would you sell a regular consumer a $90 one terabyte SSD when you could sell a hyperscaler a stack of high margin HBM modules and have them begging for more. And that's basically what is happening here. AI data centers are so hungry that even one of the big three manufacturers is pulling the plug on its retail brand. And so what I wanted to do was just read the statement here that they put out. And what it says here is Micron Technology Inc. is a leader in innovative and memory storage solutions today announced its decision to exit the Crucial consumer business, including the sale of the Crucial consumer branded products at key retailers, e-tailers, and distributors worldwide. So obviously they believe that what is crucial for them are is their high margin AI data customers and regular consumers, they're not crucial enough. And what they say is Micron will continue Crucial consumer product shipments through consumer channels until the end of fiscal Q2, which is February 2026 for them. The company will, will work closely with partners and customers through this transition and will provide continued warranty service and support for their crucial products. Micron will continue the support of sale of Micron branded enterprise products through the commercial channel customers globally. The AI driven growth in this data center has led to a surge in demand for memory and storage. Micron has made the difficult decision, I doubt it was that difficult to be honest, to exit the crucial consumer business in order to improve supply and support for our larger strategic customers and faster growing segments, which is, you know, AI, obviously. And they say, thanks to a passionate community of consumers, the crucial brand has become synonymous with technical leadership, quality, reliability of leading edge memory and storage products. We would like to thank our millions of customers, hundreds of partners, and all of the Micron team members who have supported Crucial Journey for the last 29 years. The decision reflects Micron's commitment to its ongoing pro portfolio transformation and the resulting alignment of its business to secular profitable growth vectors in memory and storage. By concentrating one core enterprise and commercial segments, Micron aims to improve long-term business performance and create value for strategic customers as well as stakeholders. Micron intends to reduce impact on team members due to this business decision through redeployment opportunities into existing open positions within the company. So yeah, they're pretty much saying that they're going all in on this whole AI business. And um, yeah, when a company makes a big decision like this, um, it does make impacts to obviously not just the consumer segment, but also internally. And um, even though that there's, 
they're saying that there's going to be redeployment within the com com within the company and other opportunities into existing open positions. There will definitely be you know job losses uh, for their cr crucial consumer brand, and you know that does suck. It, that definitely sucks to hear, especially right before the holiday, that there are going to be some people uh, you know losing their jobs. Um, and you know there's been a lot of that going on right now in the economy. Um, but yeah, this whole situation here is just horrible. I did actually want to clarify something here as well, and that is that when Micron says its crucial line of retail products is pretty much done, or you know it's going to be drying up by a Q2 of uh, their fiscal year, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're completely canning like all consumer products that they make. Um, in fact, they're not going to be stopping shipments going to you know other companies and other manufacturers or you know products that they supply their DRAM chips for because you know there's a lot of mainstream consumer products, a PlayStation Five, which uses Micron's DRAM chips. So it's not like they're saying that yeah we're gonna completely stop selling our chips to them. These guys have contractual obligations that were set well before they made this decision that they need to fulfill. You know. Even the Xbox uses uh, Micron chips and a lot of other consumer line of products from various manufacturers use their chips. So they still got to fulfill that and they still will continue to do that. But, you know, as the situation progresses forward and they got to make up new contracts with them and got to fulfill newer supply volumes, it's going to get it's going to get dicey for sure, because in the future, um, if this is going to impact the ability for other mainstream consumer products, and their ability to manufacture these products, right? Um, then obviously that's going to create more of a shortage and create this sort of compound effect where you might see a shortage in like PlayStation devices or, you know, Xbox. Now, Microsoft and Sony, these guys are not just uh, outsourcing or sourcing their chips from Micron uh, exclusively. They also do work with Samsung and SK Hynix, who are the other two big manufacturers. But, you know, speaking of like these other big manufacturers, they're... Micron's not the only one who's, you know, thinking about this. And when we were talking about the situation getting worse with this whole AI, this pivot to these companies with their focus on AI and data centers, there is this report that recently came out. And when you think about Samsung, right, you have obviously Samsung memory and NAND flash and the PC industry and the PC DIY space. But when you think about Samsung, you've got Samsung refrigerators, Samsung washing machines, and obviously you've got you know, the Samsung mobile devices. Um, and even though it's all under this one Samsung umbrella, they do actually have different divisions within them, within this umbrella that kind of, they're, they're treated like sister companies. So they're not always like on the same page. And I remember reading this report just recently saying how there was a little bit of a dispute or feud going on between Samsung mobile's division and then Samsung who manufactured NAND flash and, um, you know, DRAM saying that the mobile division wanted to pretty much secure a volume of DRAM and NAND flash so that way they could continue to manufacture these mobile devices that we use, the Galaxy series, the Fold series, um, because it's a big market, right? Like there's tons of people who use Samsung phones. And um, yeah, apparently there was this little Samsung Civil War ongoing that they just couldn't come to an agreement because obviously Samsung, they see the situation the same way as Micron, right? If we can pivot and fulfill um, all these contracts with these large AI data center companies, why on earth would we be wasting our time and trying to sell memory to customers with these lower margin products? It, from our perspective, that doesn't make sense. So, you know, it's mind boggling for, you know, a couple of reasons because it just shows you how separate Samsung's divisions are and they like to operate as these different companies, even though they're under this one umbrella. Second, it really underscores that memory makers are prioritizing these higher margin deals when it could hurt their other consumer uh, businesses. But um, clearly we see that it's just not a priority for them right now. And there was another report that I recently read from a company called Transcend. So this was reported by a, um, I think a tech journalist, he's based out of Korea. And he was talking about Transcend, and they're also a pretty well-known manufacturer. You might have seen Transcend USB drives and micro SD cards. And they basically put out a memo and told customers that its Q4 NAND flash allocation was significantly reduced and that it wasn't receiving new chip shipments since October. 
and that prices have spiked for them by 50 to 100 percent in in just a week. And, you know, the memo, memo continues on to say that um, they have a serious shortage in DRAM and NAND flash driven by orders from data centers and hyperscalers. And they warn clients that in this situation, if this pers persists, it's going to be happening for at least three to five months. And I think that's generous of them for, for them to say. I think, if anything, this is going to be going on until the entirety of 2026 and even 2027. Some people are even saying that you know, these prices, these sky high prices are going to continue on until 2028. But, you know, who knows what the what the future holds at that time. But yeah, it, things are not looking good. So, you know, let that sink in that a well-known SSD and micro SD manufacturer is essentially telling its customers, we're screwed. We can't get chips. Prices are doubling overnight. And this is going to last through next quarter. And that matches exactly what we're seeing with Samsung and Micron. And then when I made my last video, literally the day of, or I think a day after, there was another report that came out uh, surrounding NVIDIA and their products saying that when NVIDIA ships out their kit of GPUs to their AIB, so like let's take a, um, you know, a 5070 Ti, for example, which is, you know, based on GB202 or whatever, Blackwell, right? Or GB204, um, and they supply their... AIBs with the chips, and then along with that, they supply them with the required GDDDR7 modules that they need to actually put on the board on the PCB. But now, according to some recent reports, Samsung or uh, NVIDIA is basically saying that supply has been so tight on the modules themselves, the memory modules, that they're only going to be supplying the AIBs with the, the actual GPU chip itself. And they're basically telling partners that, yeah, you guys are going to have to go out there yourselves and source your own GDDR7 and GDDR6 uh, modules. So yeah, that's not looking good because NVIDIA doesn't obviously manufacture its own VRAM. It buys it from Samsung and Micron and SK Hynix, just like everyone else does. And if they can't get enough memory to bundle with their GPUs, that really tells you how ugly the shortage has become. Big board partners like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, you know, they'll probably manage because they have direct uh, relationships with these man memory manufacturers. Small vendors, they're definitely going to be struggling and be forced to pay inflated spot prices. And, um, you know, it, it's going to be a, a crappy situation overall. And even for the big suppliers and the big manufacturers like uh, Asus or MSI, um, yeah, sure, they might be able to source their own memory, but obviously with the way everyone is pivoting towards supplying their AI data center customers, um, they might struggle to also source these chips. And obviously that's going to have a big impact on supply for the products. And when there's less supply and demand is still high, then you guys know what happens. Prices are going to start going up for the consumer line of products. So it's not just going to be like, your memory dim sticks themselves that are going to be increasing in pricing. But like, obviously, you're going to see an impact on all in one devices, pre built systems, laptops, you know, um, handout devices. So all of that's going to have a big compound and snowball effect. And you know, when we circle back to crucial, um, like I said, it does really suck to see because they were one of the only manufacturers who use their consumer crucial brand to um, supply the retail market with like these sodium uh, kits that would allow customers to easily upgrade older laptops. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as I know, apart from that, very little, um, like there were very few other options. A lot of people would opt to use their uh, memory sodiums or their other sticks just to upgrade like OEM machines. And if their supply, if their consumer line of products is going to be drying up, there's going to be a lot of like, um, you know, smaller shops and enthusiasts and DIY people who are just going to be, you know, left out hanging and they're going to have to find another way to source the products. And obviously, prices are going to increase then as well. Um, and obviously, when it comes to their SSDs and their NAND flash, those were also really good products as well. Like I said, I'm using two of their drives right now. Um, and I've always found that when they came to their products, they offered really good value compared to their competitors. And I've never really had any issues at all with their consumer line of drives. Their SSDs have been, you know, pun intended, solid. Um, and to see another big player go out of the, um, you know, 
just having less competition there, it just sucks because that's also going to have an impact on pricing. Um, so it's just a really, really shitty situation overall. And like I said, other people are thinking this way as well. So you might see other companies come out and say the same thing that, you know, we're not going to be supplying our consumer line of products for a while now. And we're going to be focusing on the data center, which means less and less options. Prices are going to keep skyrocketing. And who knows when this whole mess is going to end, right? And they could ease just as easily like expand production and capacity so that way both markets are handled at the same time but the reason why they don't want to do that and spend more money and resources and time and allocation is because these guys are still afraid that you know what ai is still you know a bubble and that bubble could very well burst and then they don't want to be left holding the bag so and the other thing that they're worried about is oversupply and samsung and these guys did come out and recently talk about that because there were many instances in the past where they did have oversupply issues which caused prices to go down which obviously is not good for them it's great for the consumer because we had like dirt cheap ram kits and ssds that you could buy right like i remember being able to pick up like really good high-end one terabyte nvme drives for like 65 dollars like that would, those were those were some good times man um but obviously they don't want that to be happening so what do they do they're obviously going to be regulating and limiting supply so that way if the AI bubble does burst, they're not going to be left holding this big giant bag and they can gradually pivot back towards the consumer line of products. And, you know, I've seen the comments, I've seen the feedback, and obviously it's been pretty strong. There's a lot of people who are like, fuck that. I'm not going to be, these guys come crawling back to us. I'm not going to be buying any of their products. I'm completely out. Um, so it's going to, it's going to result in this really interesting situation. It's kind of like how, you know, when Saudi Arabia came out a few years ago and they're like, you know, maybe we should hold off and pump the brakes on, the extraction of all this oil because um, barrel prices, those are actually starting to plummet. And what we want to do is we want to keep prices high. So let's pump the brake on the extraction here and let's keep prices high and elevated and um, capacity and stock scarce. So it's pretty much the same idea that's happening here with these memory, memory manufacturers. They're going to be obviously prioritizing their profits over, you know, having just mass volume for customers and obviously lower prices. Um, but yeah, it's a really shitty situation overall. At this point, I'm not going to tell you to, you know, go out there and quickly go buy memory and NAND flash and FOMO buy. It it's really up to you. If you can hold off and buy your time with what you have, it's better, better to do that. Um, the DIY space is definitely going to become a mess in the next couple of years. We did talk about this in more extensively in my last video, so go check that out. But um, yeah, people are going to have to rely on their older systems, look at the used market, look at lower end stuff, and uh, buy their time with that. But yeah, that was pretty much everything I wanted to talk about this whole situation surrounding Micron. Just buckle up, guys. Things are, things are about to get worse and keep your eyes peeled. But that's going to be doing it for this one. I hope you guys all had a good time. Uh, well, probably not a good time, but hope you all learned something. And I'll touch base with you guys in the next video. Take care. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.